Hey guys, Angela here, and today we are gonna be making burgers at home. What is burgers without french fries? Am I right? So, before we even make the burgers, we want to prep our french fries. Really good french fries take a little few steps. It's not just cut potatoes, deep fried, and that's it. There's a little bit more science into this. So, the type of potatoes I will be using are just good old brown russet potatoes. And um, you could remove the skin if you'd like. I'm going to keep them on. And I am going to, you could really cut them however you prefer. I am going to do just like a classic, um, you know, french fry shape, I think. Um, we are heavily inspired today by in and out you know. There is a lot of talk about in and out right now, you know, they are closing the only Oakland, California location, which is kind of a big deal due to crime, which is very unfortunate. Um, and so I've been craving in and out a lot. Homemade fries, homemade burgers hits differently. You know, I know it takes a little extra time to do this aside from, you know, like nothing beats going to a drive-thru. We all know that's convenient, super easy, super fast, but homemade burgers and fries really hits differently. So this is a shape of fry uh, we are going for. And then I'm actually gonna submerge these in some cold water so that they don't um, oxidize. That is your vocabulary word for the day, oxidize, which basically just means that it's just gonna turn color once oxygen really touches the potato. So if you never notice, like if you cut specifically russet potatoes, they'll turn brown over time if exposed to air. Um, we don't want that, <laughs> you know, we want our potatoes to look golden brown and delicious. I have a pan of cold water that I'm warming up. I'm going to add a, flick, a few, there, a few splashes of white vinegar, and then we are going to put our potatoes that have been soaking into this water. And basically, we are going to parboil them. So we want to cook them until they're a little fork tender, like not fully fork tender, but just enough to give it a little give. Um, and then we are going to take them out, dry them, and then flash fry them. All right, burger sauce time, and we all know the base is mayonnaise. So put down our base down. Again, this is heavily influenced by In-N-Out. I wanna say this is very similar to In-N-Out sauce. Uh, we are going to be mayonnaise. We are gonna do some tomato paste. Yes, you heard me right. Tomato paste, guys. I know you're probably thinking, well, isn't it normally ketchup and, and mayonnaise? It's not. <laughs> tomato paste adds that rich tomato flavor without adding any additional sweetener to the sauce because a sweetener is coming from our sweet relish. So we want the tomato taste to come from the tomato paste. But we're gonna mix that up. Look at that, see? This is great, trust, trust, trust the process, okay? Awesome. We are going to add our sweet relish. <laughs> To this mix just enough there we go cool and then we are going to mix and then for some acidity we are you are most of the time it is white wine vinegar i just have red wine vinegar but i think any type of vinegar will work white vinegar works too okay so we're gonna mix this up mix our burger sauce up Mix. We're going to taste. It's pretty close. It needs a little bit more relish, a little bit more sweetness, and a little bit more acidity. 
But other than that, this burger sauce is gonna be perfect. And there we go. Burger sauce. Yum. Let's talk grilled onions. So, um, this is choice, right? You can do raw or grilled. Now, if we are going to be doing more of a in and out inspired burger, obviously, we have to do diced grilled onions. So, let's talk grilled onions. We are going to grill, not grill, but pan fry these onions with no oil, no butter, just salt. And we are gonna let it cook, slowly cook on the stove top in its own delicious juices and it'll caramelize on its own because onions have a lot of moisture and a lot of sugar already in it and it's gonna be super jammy, super delicious. And yeah, that's, that is the trick. Do not add oil or butter to this. It will caramelize on its own. Let's go. Um, I just flattened um, some ground beef like this, like I flattened it with like a rolling pin. And then I divide it in fourths and then I spread it with mustard. Trust me on the mustard, guys. It helps caramelize the meat and really helps season it. I'm gonna add some salt and some pepper on this. And then I'm gonna separate these because these are gonna be like our patties. An important step that you cannot forget is to butter your pan and then toast your buns, which I'm doing right now. Now, normally I will use like a brioche bun, but my grocery store ran out of it. So right now I'm just using regular, I think these are wheat buns, which boo, but still, it'll still be delicious because we're going to toast them in butter. Let's assemble. We have our toasted buns. We're going to add our burger patty, tomato, our grilled onions, iceberg lettuce and burger sauce. And then, our bun. Like I said, there is nothing like homemade fries and burgers at home. I know it takes a lot of extra time, but trust me, it has its own vibe. Hey guys, it's the next day. Um, the burgers from last night were seem magnifique, but I wanna take a moment to make something that I am a little too embarrassed and shy to order. Um, you know how like In-N-Out has like the secret menu? That's already well established, but people have been doing interesting, their own spin to the secret menu. And I'm talking about tomato wrapped and the onion wrapped burger. So it's basically like the protein style burger that we normally know and love, but being wrapped with the other vegetables options. I don't know, I'm kind of weirded out by the tomato wrap burger just cause it seems super soggy, but I'm very interested in the onion wrapped burger. So they're like whole grilled onions sandwiching the cheesy burger patty. So let's do it. I cut up our onions in like disc forms and I'm just going to pan fry these until they're just like, we don't want them super caramelized and soft because it's gonna break down, but we want it to still have like an al dente taste to it. So. This feels a little insane. So here are the onions. It was very hard to kind of keep them all in one structure, but they are, I could feel by touching them, they are slightly al dente. And then we are going to grab our double cheese, our double patty, one cheese situation. Basically it's like a flying Dutchman that we're putting on top of the grilled onion. And of course our burger sauce, which we are going to dump. We are going to crown it with, oh God our grilled onion and there you guys have it. It's time to try this uh, hmm, monstrosity of a burger. You guys are ordering this through the drive-thru and eating in your car, that is insane. That, I can't imagine what the tomato is like because the tomatoes just seem so juicy. But let me just uh, 
pull back my bangs and just Um, I get it. I get it. it. It's very tasty, but I that is not for me. We're just going to uh, 